My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 11,550 kilometres so far and I've got 5,050 left to go. So far on the mission. I've survived alone in the desert, a robbery at gunpoint, near death in the jungle, a brutal crash, horror infested waters, malnutrition, sickness and injuries and raised £142,000 for charity. In this episode, I head towards Senegal. We face the most difficult border of the mission, try to find our way around it and pull off the greatest jib of all time. How did you wake up this morning? Guinea man rolled up with a gun, said something, said bonjour, and then he tried to speak to me in French and I thought, do you know what, this time I'm gonna try and pretend I know what, I know French. It didn't go very well. Why did he have a gun? He didn't look like a government official, but he claimed to be military police guarding these phone antennas. He saw us on the road and he popped here up in uh, civilian clothes with uh, muskets. <laughs> so, we are crossing into Senegal tomorrow. Yeah. How's that border gonna go down, Gus? I'm gonna get close to the border. I'm gonna accuse us for not having the right documents and uh, gonna be stuck there for a few days. All other borders of this country think if you just have like an e-visa, it's enough. This border is convinced that you need to use this visa just to enter and then within five days get a real visa in your passport. This is written nowhere, not ideal. Especially because there's no petrol in the country either. So. Yeah, that really doesn't help. Nah, we're going to fly straight through now. Yeah, definitely. Sweeten them up with some uh, joy cats. Yes. Uh, We've been warned about this border since the beginning of Guinea. But with the fuel crisis, we had no choice but to blast right through it and hope for the best but I still had 60k of hard stomping to get through before I could worry about that and I pushed on fearlessly through the last of Guinea. I've been having some sleepless nights, right? Oh, okay. Just pondering this question. Yeah. What scares the hardest geezer? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about this. What I do find scary, actually, is... I'll tell you a story, right? Mm. All right. In the town I'm from, called Worthen, there was a lady called Mad Mary. And Mad Mary was this old woman with really long, like dark grey kind of hair. You'd see her like in the middle of the night, I'd be like walking home from a party or something like this. Mm. In the middle of the road, like can't even see her face. Terrifying. Wow. Terrifying, bro. Did you ever talk to her or no? Nah. No. No. When I was a kid, I watched Jaws. And that's actually probably the reason why I don't swim. I actually used to be scared of um, the 10 o'clock news. That's interesting. Yeah. Why? Don't know, just f***ing used to send shivers down my spine. Does anything scare you now? Hmm. You could say, like, it's things like scared of dying, but I don't really think I am scared of dying, you know? Like, when my time comes, my time comes, and that's kind of like how it is. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's scary. Can you think of any things you're scared of? That's tricky. I mean, scared of dying used to be a very big topic for me. Hmm. It's actually quite crippling. It stops you from living, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it absolutely does. I also, like, as a teenager, like, my instant answer would be, oh, future like, as in yeah. like what am i going to do with myself it definitely used to be a much more of a thing when i was uh, younger like you said to be fair yeah. i feel like i'm confident enough in myself that i don't feel like i'm gonna f things up too bad that's it i mean i could do well, who knows? <laughs> yeah i mean the fear of failure is i hope to think that i wouldn't actually be that scared of failing because if i fail i, I know i'm stupid yeah i know i've got a load of lessons to learn anyway yeah it just depends on what you do after you fail if you take that with you or if you just fail and kill up yeah. Any advice for viewers to confront their fears? Facing things head on is pretty good. Right? Action is important. Go with strong intentions. You'll either come out the other end with flying colours or you'll learn something very valuable. Over the last few days, Giddy had quickly shifted from thick jungle and mountains to flat open plains and dry bush, teasing me for the challenges that lay ahead. But to worry about that, I'd have to make it to Senegal first. Well, this can only mean one thing. The basics here, South African bread, some bananas. Nice. But it gets better. God, I hate it when you say that so much. Forgot us what I exactly Pies. bought. Fries with chicken nuggets. What? <laughs> yeah, we have pies with fries and... I could feel it. In the bones. Yeah, and In the bones. <laughs> <laughs> 
And what makes this uh, pie better than like a British pie is that it's deep fried. I will actually agree with you on that. Oh, I got lightheaded for a second. Yeah, me too. <laughs> It really is a simple pleasure out here, isn't it? Cool. So I bought four of everything, so Amazing. I suggest we quickly finish four plate before Russ comes. Thank you, Shetty. You gonna kiss again or what? <laughs> Save that for later. Mm. Oh, so good, Stan. You happy boy? Mm-hmm. Yo. Oh, yeah. Nice. I think the van's gonna get on crossing this car. Have you heard of anyone doing it in a not far, uh, something that's not far before? There were three persons that went in a 4x4 with caravan behind it. And they got stuck all the time and were very slow, but they made it. How much of a genuine concern do you think that the van is going through there? Because for me, it's quite high. It's quite high. Yeah. What were you just saying, Gus? We know that there's like government officials coming up today that is known to extort tourists but even locals for high amounts of money. Lovely. I heard, don't get caught making photos. Some tourists got into like a physical fight oh with the police yeah. for that. Yeah. It is kind of a whole thing though, Gus. I will go ahead with the liquor and make sure they're drunk at the time you guys get her. <coughs> nice. Sounds like we've got a plan then, boys. Sorted. Plan firmly not in place at all. We headed 2k from camp towards the corrupt checkpoint. I took a side road on foot, managing to dodge it completely. But the boys, however, had two vehicles to pass by with, and it was not going to be so easy. Right, I'm going to attempt to check out a side road to potentially bypass this checkpoint. Bye, Jamie. Good luck. Miss you. This is supposedly a road going all the way around the checkpoint. Looking good so far. Bollocks. It's a school with a wall. F We've tried to find a way around and um, gone on several reckeys. It's not going to happen. No. So I'm going to walk around, take the carne with me, go stamp the carne, while Stan joins Gus at the police checkpoint. They want a sh ton of money per person. So this way we uh, get the carne stamped earlier and save some money. Stan and Gus headed into the checkpoint, hoping to find a way to talk their way out of an extortion. Meanwhile, Jamie attempted to sneak past in the side roads. Safe to say, none of this went to plan. Trapped at the border indefinitely, while the police played for time with their passports, the boys had nothing to do but wait and hope. What's the occasion? Uh, our anniversary. On top of that, also um, the fact that we're stuck at a police checkpoint. Oh yeah. I thought you were celebrating me being here for 100 days. We got cut. We're sitting today here together, so, like not stuck at a police checkpoint to celebrate our anniversary 100 days of chilling. One of our relationships. What are you talking about, Stanley? It's my Shatsi. My shots. It's my shots. My shots. Celebrating with some nice fish. Love that you're celebrating me being here for 100 days by eating the one thing that I'm not keen on. Look, you forced the f***ing occasion to come. If we'd known in advance, maybe we would have prepared something a bit nicer. We'd just be grateful that we're here being your f***ing friend. You lose it. <clears throat> As I continued on the road to the border, the boys carried on waiting. Hours passed, then they were called into the chief's office. But there was no way they were getting out of this without paying. Gus, however, had one final trick up his sleeve. So, we managed to get through the dreaded checkpoint, which was a nightmare. We were there for hours and hours and hours. Eventually, Gus managed to bamboozle them with some foreign currency from DRC that they were so interested in, they just took a few notes as presents and then accepted about 140 euros less than they were asking for. So that was a win. We then went to customs, which is normally the easiest thing in the world. They just stamp it and they let you go. But Jared is technically the owner of the 4x4. We've never been asked or ever had any problems with the ownership of the vehicle. But of course, these guys asked. The van stamps through, the 4x4 is not. So now Gus and Jamie are stuck here. We'll see how many of us make it into Senegal. Maybe two? Eventually, we had all made it to the border out of Guinea, but this day had more shit to throw at us. Somehow, they knew I'd sneak past the checkpoint 
and I was in big trouble. Hang on, what the f is this guy wearing? And uh, just explain that normally for us we need to call it but if we're able to understand each other, then it doesn't. Should we uh, get a bunch of comedy money? Our usual tactics weren't working, but I was pretty distracted to be honest. This man was the chief of police for the entire border crossing, wearing a fucking nice boobs t-shirt. The man was a maverick. I had to have it. I'll get you clean one of mine, I'll you one. Why do I like being like the shots in my shoes? Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you one of these. You got the full passport. I'm really on his t shirt. Gus, can you just ask around and ask where the man with the nice boobs is? Let's see the commissaire. Is he actually? Of course. We've just been let off by the commissaire. We've been set free and now we're looking for him again. Yeah, we need the t shirt. He's going, he's going. He's got the t shirt with him. <laughs> I'll give you one of mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Merci, merci, merci. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Coming to this border crossing face at eight pound worth of extortion or being turned away. Now I was buying a nice boobs t-shirt off the chief of police, passport stamped, what a jib. Clutching this piece of pure art, I ran on, out of Guinea and into Senegal. And already this new country had something mad to throw at us. So I found a troop of baboons just chilling in the road. If you look carefully at all the frames still, you can see them in the woods. They're keeping a close eye on me, potentially to pincer movement me, because they are known to be very aggressive. I want to get some sweet shots, so I f it. So they have in fact now surrounded me. Kind of terrifying, but also pretty sick. They totally know I'm here and they keep like baring their teeth at me so hopefully I can convince them that I'm not here to hurt them. Fucking beautiful thing. Ah! Oh that made me jump. <laughs> I ran on another 20k towards the Senegalese crossing, stopping just short to camp, elated on the greatest heist of all time. We are in Senegal, girls and boys, we made it. Do you have the t-shirt with you? Yeah, it's right here. Nice boobs. <laughs> Imagine, yeah, this is the guy that is in charge of the entire immigration facility for Guinea, and he parades around wearing this. That is the most audacious thing I've ever seen. Buying his t-shirt off him and claiming that as a win. It's a big L, but to claim the win. It's like we've woken up in a zoo, Gus. What kind of animals did you see this morning? I didn't see that many, but I heard a lot of them. I think they were donkeys, but I swear I, they sounded like elephants. Oh. So we've just left Guinea. Any closing thoughts on the country? Guinea, the people were friendly. Is some scenic, some some scenic stuff. They all seem to be obsessed with burning everything down though, so that was quite... Yeah, like our drone. <laughs> just love burning things. They really do. I've though. never seen a country like it. They just loved setting everything off. Yeah. Didn't there weren't many fields that I saw that hadn't been burned. Yeah, they were all just burning everything. <laughs> Play. Um, didn't seem to make any sense to me, but no. I, I don't understand a lot of things, so maybe that's just another one of them. I mean, to be fair, I love burning shit, so I, I love get burning it. Shit too. I do get it. Um, Russ, what, what's going on? What's going on? What? The f is on the back of your head. Is it a spider or something? Bro, I'm a Let me get it off. I'm a hipster now. I'm just cool, right? You don't know about these things, Stan. What about do you think about hipsters. my new haircut, Gus? Yeah, pretty damn hipster. <laughs> 
rocking my sexy new hairstyle, I bounded out onto the road, ready to utterly ruin a whole new country worth of tarmac. And what incredible tarmac it was. Smooth, straight, flat, perfect. I was in love and about to obliterate it. First in egg Liz meal. Really nice. Just got myself an omelette, three eggs, two teaspoons of black pepper, and the stock cube. Good splash splash, pretty tasty, good stuff. Now, right, what's the Senegalese border? Oh, so easy. What border? I think there was like a sign written there at border. I don't know. Yeah, we just went into an office for about 10 seconds and then left, and now we're in Senegal. Passport, stamp, done. Bon voyage. I've traveled over 25 countries. This is the easiest border I've ever done in Africa. Yeah, mate, crazy. What's the first 25 case? <sighs> yeah, good. It's getting a bit hot out there. I think the Sahara is coming. She's on her way. I think this is like the first time in weeks that the fan is out again. Yeah. Pineapple chunks in pineapple juice. That sounds pretty good. First incision. Now what we do, we suck a bit of the juice out. Oh yeah. Make less of a mess. Where did you learn this technique? This one's all talent. Unfortunately, sometimes you're born with it, sometimes you ain't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Look at that final product. Look at that. How does it taste? Amazing. Refreshed and refueled, I hit the road once more. Had lots to look forward to here. Visitors, perfect tarmac, French supermarkets, and the beginning of the Sahara Desert all awaited me. We were truly in the final phase now. How's it going? Stable. Stable. Stable as shit, like always? Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense, yeah. Who did um, camp? K okay, short, over a K um, short. Me. Um, Are you just bad at maths or what? Apparently so. <laughs>